So, by far and away, the saddest president in the United States presidency in the list of presidents that we've had is Franklin Pierce. And Franklin Pierce was a dark horse candidate, just like John Kasich is hoping that he will be. So Franklin Pierce, he was sad because all his children died, every single one of them. His first one died within three days of being born, the other one typhus, and then his 11-year-old child, the only one that had survived. When he was inaugurated to become president, the 14th president, Franklin Pierce, he was actually a shitty president. He was for the Fugitive Slave Act, the Kansas-Nebraska Act. But he, the grieving over his 11-year-old, the 11-year-old child Benjamin had died when they were on the train ride to the White House. Franklin Pierce's wife wasn't interested in politics. She was very devout, and she had blamed his election, Franklin Pierce's election, uh, was the reason for Benjamin's death. And so that clouded his entire experience. What does that have to do with anything? Not much except for the lead to get you pulled in. Franklin Pierce was a very sad man. He also had very curly hair, too. It seems like it's not white hair. He had to have had some nappiness in his bloodline somewhere. Um, but this is about the brokered conventions. And brokered conventions used to be very normal in American politics, between 1868 and 1952, 18 of the 44 Democratic Party conventions took more than one ballot to settle on a candidate. 18 of 44, nearly half. So broker conventions were normal. Talk about uh, Franklin Pierce's uh, convention in, in, you know, what, fucking 18-something uh, before the Civil War, the, lost, mul the last multi-ballot convention took place in 1952, when Democrats had to vote three ballots before settling on Adlai Stevenson as their sacrificial lamb to run against the World War II hero Dwight D. Eisenhower. So 1952 was when the Democrats' last convention was. And Dwight D. Eisenhower entered the 1952 Republican convention after he just won 26% of the delegates in the primaries, but he went on to win the Republican nomination over the Ohio Senator Robert Taft in the last true brokered convention for either party. Now, I've seen that the Republicans, some say 1952 is the last brokered convention, others say 1948. And then there's some questions about, you know, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter had a Teddy Kennedy insurgent campaign running up, you know, under his ass. And then you also had... Ronald Reagan, who ran underneath Gerald Ford in 76, but uh, in 76 it only lasted one ballot, so therefore it's contested but not brokered, and it only lasted a ballot, so there wasn't no wheeling and dealing. So a true blue sort of brokered convention, 1952 for the Democrats, 1948 for the Republicans. Republicans have a long history with broker conventions, just like the Democrats. last one was 1948, when New York Governor Thomas Dewey, considered a stiff by many of his colleagues, fended off challenges from California Governor Earl Warren and conservative Senator Robert Taft of Ohio. So 1948, Thomas Dewey wins, and then I guess eventually he gets smashed, right? And, um, and so 48, 52, these are long times. This is 50, 60 years ago. And so nobody today in the modern era knows jack shit about how these conventions have been working. But I like these conventions. They're more interesting, and that's the scary thing about the Republicans. I've seen it in Kentucky. The Republicans beat the shit out of one another during the primaries, and then they coalesced around their one candidate. So if it goes to a contested uh, convention, it makes it more exciting. There's an increased turnout rate. There's millions new voters for the Republicans. Not true with I'd like to focus on Rutherford B. Hayes, because the election of 1876 is what ended Reconstruction. It killed Abraham Lincoln's dream. John Wilkes Booth got what he wanted. After the election of 1876, Reconstruction ended because Rutherford B. Hayes, with his narrow victory, made a compromise saying he'd pull out all the federal troops from the South in order to keep the presidency. Now, there's been a ton of dark horse candidacies. You've had Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln, Rutherford B. Hayes, James Garfield, Warren G. Harding, James K. Polk, 
and Rutherford B. Hayes. These are all dark horse candidacies. They were not the first choice. They weren't leading in the primaries or caucuses. Nobody saw them or expected them to win or gain the nomination whatsoever. And then they eventually walk out of the convention with the nomination. So Franklin Pierce, okay, Franklin Pierce is our nation. Abraham Lincoln himself won after three ballots. There was Seward, Seward. There was another guy that was supposed to win, and then all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, fucking Lincoln comes up. And the reason why was because Seward, William Seward, I want to say S-E-W-A-R-D, I think it's William, he was too against slavery. He was too much of an abolitionist. He said that there are some things that are higher than the Constitution, such as morality. And even though those are Lincoln's views, eventually, Lincoln seemed more moderate compared to him. So after three ballots, Lincoln won. Rutherford B. Hayes won after seven ballots. James Garfield, he won um, after 36 ballots. And Franklin Pierce is the most remarkable. G. Harding was a compromise candidate. He won on the 10th ballot. James Garfield took him 36 ballots. And James K. Polk, he won there after so many ballots, too. So did Rutherford B. Oh, seven, seven ballots. Now, Franklin Pierce is fascinating because Franklin Pierce's name doesn't even get on the ballot until the 35th ballot. So it's a deadlock. 35 times the Pierce is a Democrat, you know. Of course he is, right, with the racism. Um, he was in favor of the Fugitive Slave Act, the Kansas-Nebraska Act. He was totally all about the Missouri Compromise. So he didn't even get on the ballot until 35, and then he wins on the 49th ballot. And here's the story. The convention assembled on June 1st in Baltimore, Maryland, where a lot of conventions have taken place in Baltimore. And the deadlock occurred as expected. The first ballot was taken on June 3rd of 288 delegates. Cass claimed 116, Buchanan 93, and the rest were scattered without a single vote for Pierce. The next 34 ballots passed with no one near victory and still no votes for Pierce. He wasn't even put on the ballot. The Buchanan team decided to have their delegates vote for minor candidates, including Pierce, to demonstrate that no one but Buchanan could win. It was that once delegates realized this, the convention would unite behind Buchanan. This novel tactic backfired after several ballots as Virginia, New Hampshire, and Maine switched to Pierce. The remaining Buchanan forces began to break for Marcy, and before long, Pierce was in third place. After the 49th ballot, North Carolina Congressman James C. Dobbin delivered an unexpected and passionate endorsement of Pierce, sparking a wave of support for the dark horse candidate. And then on the 49th ballot, Pierce received all but six of the votes and thus gained the Democratic nomination for president. All of them but six. All of them. Nearly unanimous. So Franklin Pierce just came and, you know, uh, fucking cleaned house. Just absolutely fucking cleaned house. And so that's a remarkable story. That uh, Warren G. Harding is closer to what John Casey can do with the two frontrunners. But the Klan bake lasted 103 ballots.